So we have a differential equation and it appears to be linear. So let's go ahead and solve it. The first step is to write this in standard form. So we want it to look like dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x. That's the form that we want this to be written in. So in order to do that, we'll divide everything by cosine x. So we'll divide this by cosine x. We'll divide this by cosine x. And we'll divide this by cosine x. So we end up with dy dx and then plus sine x over cosine x is simply the tangent of x. And let me put parentheses around it here and then times y equals and then 1 over cosine is secant x. So now we'll compute the integrating factor. So mu of x is equal to e to the indefinite integral of this piece here. So the tangent of x dx. And if you forget how to integrate tangent, uh, rewrite it as follows. This is sine x over cosine x dx. And I suppose we could just do it really quick. Why not? So to integrate this guy, sine x over cosine x dx, we'll simply let u be equal to cosine x. And then so du is negative sine x dx. And then we don't have a negative here. So we multiply by negative 1. So negative du is sine x dx. So this guy becomes, let's see, sine x dx, that's negative du, so negative du over u. So this is negative ln absolute value of u, and u was cosine, and then plus our constant. So now back to the problem. So this is equal to e to the negative ln absolute value of cosine x. Now we want to write this in a convenient way. At some point we have to multiply the differential equation by our integrating factor, mu of x. So we can bring the negative one upstairs, and this is e to the natural log of cosine x to the negative one. So this is really e natural log absolute value of one over cosine x. So this is really e natural log, and then it's secant x. Now, this is equal to the absolute value of secant x. We want uh, to get rid of the absolute value, so we will. So this will be secant x. And this is only true if the secant of x is positive, right? Only true if the secant of x is positive. So that's going to affect what's called the interval of definition of our answer. Anyways, we have mu of x equal to the secant of x. So that's our integrating factor. So now we're going to take secant x and multiply it, uh, or multiply secant x, multiply our equation rather by secant x. So when we do that, we get secant x, parentheses dy dx, plus secant x, tangent x, tangent x, y, and then here we get secant squared. And the magic thing that happens with linear equations is that this term here, this entire sum here, this is the derivative with respect to x of our integrating factor, mu of x, so secant x, times our unknown function y. And this is equal to the secant squared of x. At this point, it's pre pretty easy to check. Let's see, the derivative of the first is secant x tangent x times the second factor, so y, plus the first factor, so secant x, times the derivative of y, dy dx. So you can just use the product rule here and, and check your work to make sure that it's okay. At this point, we can simply integrate both sides. So I'm just going to write it, integrate. When you integrate the left-hand side, the derivative goes away. So you end up with secant x, y. And when you integrate secant squared, just think, what is a function whose derivative is secant squared? Well, tangent. And then let's go ahead and add our constant c. 
to finish, simply divide by secant x. So y is equal to, um, let's see, tangent x divided by secant x plus c over secant x. And I believe this can be simplified. Let's try to do that. So we can write tangent as sine x over cosine x. And we can write secant as 1 over cosine x. And this is plus. Well, secant is 1 over cosine. So this is going to be c cosine x, right? Because when you divide by 1 over cosine, you multiply by cosine over 1. And then here, um, sine x, cosine x is being divided by 1 over cosine. So it's really multiplied by cosine over 1 as before. And so it's just a little bit of simplification. So y is equal to sine x plus c times cosine x. And that is the final answer. Now we talked a little bit about um, the interval of definition up here. Uh, when we drop the absolute value, we said that the secant of x had to be positive. Something else that has to happen in all of this is that cosine can't be zero. So what you want to think about is when is this true? Well, a natural place to look, if you look at the graph of cosine, this is negative pi over 2. This is pi over 2. So anywhere here, not including pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, the absolute value of secant x is simply secant x. So our interval of definition, if you had to find that, interval of definition In this case, this would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I hope this video made sense.